Good morning. Thank you to BMW from Raleigh Durham for bringing the motorcycle. Um, I'd like you just to remember this morning just uh, what century we're in. We're in the 21st century. Now, in the, in the 20th century, in 1989, in, uh, in fact, my husband, Barry Coleman, and I, uh, co-founders of Riders for Health, went to Africa, and what we saw was uh, women walking uh, when they needed health care. The woman you see here, Okay, women such as Binta and people like her, in fact, 86% of the uh, people in, in Africa are, in fact, living in rural areas. When they need health care, if they're in obstructed labor or they need an immunization for their child, they have to walk. Or the health worker who is uh, responsible for the, those people has to walk. Now, we saw that, and we also saw that in Ministry of Health car parks, and that. So we looked at this, and it made us very angry, because we thought in the 20th century, as it was at the time, knowing that the ancestors of that motorcycle there were made, were invented and developed 120 years before, we felt it was an absolute outrage that women and children and men in those areas were trapped in unhealthy conditions and not being able to be served in the way that we all take so much for granted. So here we were, um, faced with this challenge. We had never had any background in global health. We were refugees in the global health area from the motorcycle community, and we thought, we can make a difference here. We understand about engines, we understand about uh, the environment. These vehicles, the ones that you see there, should be running and serving people with health care. So we believe that the dirty secret of global health is lack of transport. It is one of those things that people never talk about. It's never acknowledged. And here were, were Barry and I, people who knew nothing about global health, and what we feel is that the people that you see here, the, 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 the men and women who are now our technicians and mechanics who work with dirty hands, are actually fundamental to the health system. Now, we know that mechanical work is very low down the intellectual food chain of, um, of global health. But without it, we're not going anywhere. And we know that, that this man working on preventive maintenance for vehicles is doing something that you would all be incredibly bored by. Maintenance is not a sexy word, it's not a sexy activity, but it's really, really vital. So we know that this man and his motorcycle is fundamental to the health system. And the person riding this is a health worker. And we're, partnership, we're a partnership organization. We want the people who do health to be able to do health and not mess about with vehicles that don't work or trying to make them work. So I just would like to hand over now to Mahadi Hlasa, who is uh, country director of, our, of Riders for Health uh, Lesotho, who really understands why this is so important. Hi, thank you very much. I'm Mahadi Hlasa, I'm from Lesotho. I start, I'm an environmental health practitioner and I've been working in the, with, uh, in the Minister of Health in Lesotho, and I was one of the people who were very frustrated because after training, we had all the information, and as you know, environmental health, we have to do all the things in the environment, manipulate the environment in a way that we render it safe to the people. But we know that environment goes a long way. It's, it's, it has to go with the people, the behaviors, and the way people do things. So to be able to change people's attitudes and behavior and also to educate them on the things that they are supposed to know, you have to be able to get to them frequently. And our country is such that it's very mountainous. We are a mountain kingdom. And it's very difficult for people to move around. And our road infrastructure is also not so good. 
So the only way for health workers is to either ignore them or get to the people who are nearer to you. So when Riders for Health started in Lesotho in 1991, I was one of the fortunate people who was not only trained to ride a bike, but I was also trained to maintain my motorbike. And also I was trained to become a rider, a, a trainer. So I also trained people to ride bikes. So it became very easy for me because all the things that I was taught, all the things I wanted to put into practice, I was able to go to the communities. And even where there were no roads, I, I used to ride a bike and it made my work very easy. So I know the impact that could be brought about by health workers actually going out to the hard to reach communities who cannot even come to the people. And also, so I decided to, to continue doing the work and I inspired other people because we were training both men and women in the health system to, to ride bikes. But now I, I joined Riders for Health again now as the country director. We work together with all the other health partners and mainly the Ministry of Health to make sure to, we, to help improve access to health services by mobilizing the health workers. We started off with a wide range of uh, outreach health workers, which included nurses, doctors, uh, AIDS counselors, TB officers, and we also had information officers and social development officers. So all of them were on, put on bikes, and they each were able to go out to the communities to do whatever they, they studied, or uh, whatever they, was, they were supposed to do in the communities. But also due to a changing uh, environments and also changing priorities in the ministry, we were approached to help with uh, uh, transportation of medical samples since we are, our health, uh, the health centers are very far from the, from the, the laboratory hospital, hospital laboratories. And we had to develop a system of transporting these medical samples from the rural and hard to reach uh, health centers to the uh, medical, uh, to the district hospital labs, and then to take the results back. So we have been able to partner with a lot of uh, uh, NGOs and development partners that are working in our country because sample transportation affects all of them. Each one of them that works in the communities has to get these samples at some stage to the, to the lab and for people to be put on treatment and to do their follow-ups, they need to, to do some tests at some stages. So we are working with the Ministry of Health and other development partners. And since we started, we, were, we have been able to reduce the turnaround time for results for people to be put on, on treatment. Within one week, people can get their results, which uh, it used to take about three months or more for people to get their results. And we lost a lot of people to follow up, and some of them never came back to, for treatment. And we also lost a lot of them. But now we are working very closely with the ministry, and we are part of the primary health care team within the health system. And we are, the Ministry of Health sees Riders for Health as a strategy to watch uh, increasing access to, to health communities. So we actually respond to demand and do all the things that the ministry and other health partners would require us to do in order to, to reach the, the health communities. Thank you very much. I'd like to hand over now to Jonas, who will introduce himself. We love to work with partners, and we love to work with organizations like IntraHealth. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jonas. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. 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 I think the IT people sold out. I'm the uh, project director for IntraHealth International in Zambia. We are running an HIV AIDS program in rural underserved populations, which are very much hard to reach. Uh, yeah. So as you can see by the pictures, I think uh, access to healthcare in Africa is mostly, I mean, with their challenges, three things that I can point out. One, we have a heavy disease burden, HIV, TB, malaria, and other infectious diseases. Two, we have, uh, I mean, weak health systems. I mean, we have severe human resources for health shortages and then other systems as well. Three, I mean, uh, the general underdevelopment. So in Africa, basically, in sub-Saharan Africa, personally, I've been privileged to work in Zambia, Botswana, Nigeria, Rwanda, Swaziland, and a number of countries. What we have, I mean, are not only bad roads, but the lack of roads. It's not a question of uh, like lack of health, uh, few health workers. It's also a question of lack of those health workers. And it's also a question of not only having deplorable health facilities, it's a question of lack of facilities. As you can see by the pictures shown, we have populations that are totally cut off, staying on islands. When it's rain season, they are basically unreachable. How do we do that? I think adversity is 
the mother of invention. And throughout international, we have innovated a lot in Zambia. We go by boats to fishing camps to provide HIV services, to provide family planning services, and other essential services that are there. We use bikes, and we use the local populations as health workers. We train lay people as counselors. We equip them, they're able to cancel and test. And this year, we're actually expanding on our mobile and retroviral program, taking services to people that are totally cut off from the health system. So I think uh, that's what I would say. Very innovative and it's very sustainable because the population and the community owns it. We work a lot with traditional leaders, government officials, and we are actually working with government to accredit these community-led people into formal health care workers in the country. Thank you. So just to uh, finish up here, I'd like to tell you um, a good news story. In um, the Gambia, we have connected the money together with the healthcare because the, those two are inextricably linked. So we've created a financial model that means that the Ministry of Health in the Gambia have every vehicle that they need for every health center, all their outreach and all their referrals. And to this date, where they are reporting, the Ministry of Health is reporting, that nobody has missed a maternal health clinic and nobody has, um, every, all the children except for 2% are, are now immunized. So it just shows you that the very boring things, the things that are already made, um, if you get the supply chain and the maintenance right, you can really use that tool to affect the healthcare across Africa and to really make a, a very big change. You don't have to make anything new, but the new thing for us is innovation of maintenance and maintenance is absolutely vital in Africa. So putting the money together with the maintenance and the vehicles and the working with the Ministry of Health, we're able to see, these by the way, are our women technicians in the Gambia, all Muslim women, all great mechanics, and they're really making a difference to the health system. So our message to everyone is maintenance is key, putting the money together with the with the innovation will really make a healthier Africa and working in partnership with people will really bring about healthy mothers and babies and other communities. Thank you.